Hello everyone, welcome back. In the last couple of videos, we studied a little bit about XPath that how the Chrome developer tool generates the XPath by itself, how we can use the XPath to ensure that the element that we have identified using that locator is a unique element. Also, we studied a little bit difference upon absolute XPath and relative XPath. Now, in this video, I'm going to start from the very basics of XPath. I'm going to take an example of an element where I'll first generate the absolute XPath. Then I'm going to generate the same elements relative XPath. And as the video goes along, we will deal with more and more complex XPath. And in the end, you will be an expert in the XPath. You can create any XPath by yourself, which will be always unique. Now let's jump into the absolute XPath. I'm going to go to the engine digital practice page. And let's take an example of a checkbox over here. Now I'm going to take an example of the first checkbox. I'm going to right click, do inspect element. Now here it says that the tag of the element is an input tag and it has three attributes. Type is a checkbox, name is a car and value is a BMW. If we see along the DOM, obviously all the three have name as car. So it doesn't make sense to use name as the locator in this case. Now, let us first see what the system that is a Chrome developer tool has generated XPath for us. So we know we're gonna right click over here, copy and copy XPath. Now, this is an absolute XPath that is generated by the system. Because as we know, the absolute XPath starts from the very beginning in the DOM, starts from the HTML, has single forward slashes and it traverses through the child element. Now let's use this X path and try to check mark the checkbox, the first one, which is the BMW. So I'm going to copy this from here. I'm going to go back to my write editor. This is the last test case that we have used. So let's create another test case in this case. Let's give it a name advanced X paths. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to copy a few lines from here, which will save us to write. I'm going to copy these. I'm going to go here and I'm going to paste. Oh, let me see why it didn't got copied. Okay, this is good. So we have copied the some rows from the our open browser test case so that it, we can save some time. So here we're going to open the engine digital practice page. So I'm going to copy that link and paste it over here. Okay, I'm going to maximize the browser window. I'm going to make it sleep for two seconds. And here I'm going to take the X path which is generated. So I'm going to back it up, paste. Now, in this case, we, we don't have to input any elements. So we'll do click element. And here we don't need this because we are just clicking the element and this one needs just a one locator over here. And then I'm going to make it sleep for two seconds. Another thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to do a tear down here which we have already studied what is a teardown. In the teardown, I'm going to close my browser always if even the test case has failed or the test case has passed. The reason behind this is that let's suppose the test case fail. Then if the test case fail, the Chrome browser is not closed in because of which robot framework do not kill the Chrome web driver. Now, since the Chrome web driver is not killed when the test case is failed, you have to go manually to the processes and kill the Chrome driver. And that takes a lot of time because every after every failed test case, you have to do that. So what we'll do is over here is we're going to set up close browser in teardown. Now we don't have to write close browser over here. Okay. Now we have our practice page over here. We're going to click this element and make it sleep for two seconds so that you guys can actually see it. Now, before I select this test case to run, there is one step that we have forgot. That is the one that we have to change it to iframe 
now i know i haven't still talked about the iframe yet but you will see there will be a video later which will talk about iframe in detail so i'm gonna go back to my open browser sorry advanced xpath and i'm gonna use the select frame over here so i'm just gonna insert a row select select frame and i'm gonna give the id of this frame id is equal to iframe dash zero one four so now we have selected the frame in which we want to work on now let's select this test case now and go to run and actually run the test case now it is opening the browser now carefully observe when it's going to click the checkbox BMW and over here it's left for two seconds and it closed the browser by itself because we set up the closed browser in teardown now I'm gonna open the log for this I'm gonna click on maximize browser window select iframe it selected this frame and then I'm gonna click on the click element with this X path so here we saw that using the absolute X path we clicked on the element now the next thing that we have to do is that I'm gonna go back to my right editor in this case now the as the X path is we have used is the absolute X path now we have to talk about relative X path that how we can generate the relative X part of the same element now I'm gonna go back to my Chrome browser over here you can say the tag is the input type is checkbox name car and value BMW but out of all three the unique over here we can see is the value name is similar in all there's all three checkbox so the one we can use over here is value and the tag is input so I'm gonna here we have already seen the the basic syntax to create the X path I'm gonna write it again over here that is the tag square brackets at attribute equal in the single inverted commas the value and we are going to close it now if you follow this the tag here is input I'm going to do input next thing will be at attribute will be value is equal to BMW and X path is complete so here we have created the most basic relative X path I'm going to copy this X path I'm going to go back to my right editor and over here I'm going to paste it I'm going to save my test case and see it's going to do the same thing but now in case of that long absolute X path we have traversed directly to the child element using two forward slashes so I'm going to start it I'm going to open the browser maximize the window it checked the BMW waited for two seconds close the browser so here we can see that the test case is passed and we have used the relative X path instead of the absolute X path now one thing more over here is that we can instead of using the tag over here we can use this asterisk mark and we could do that this too value is equal to BMW but this one is not an effective because it says that anything that you find with an attribute value and the actual value should be BMW and there can be multiple input tags for the same one can be input one can be select tag with the value so in that case this is not effective and in that case it's going to fail so it's always better not to use asterisk and to use actual tag name from the DOM so in the next video we're going to start talking about more complex X path but in this video I just wanted to give you a basic idea that how you differ between an absolute X path and how you create a relative X path by yourself. So this is all for this video guys practice as much as you can on the website engine digital practice page and if you have any questions please free to post them I will respond to them as soon as possible. Thank you for watching this video and I'm going to see you in the next video.